Hey, it's Benji Cole, son of Al Cole from CBS Radio, welcoming you to another edition of People of Distinction, the talk that gives an in-depth view of some of the most dynamic, intelligent, and successful people on the planet. Run to our website, peopleofdistinction.org, for more info, or you can always email me directly at benji at alcoholenterprises.com. And on the line with us today, we have Debbie Galbraith. We'll be discussing her fantastic book, His Glory is Greater, available at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. And I will say, Debbie was brought to our network, People of Distinction, today by some of the best movers in the business, Book Launch International Publishing. So if you have a book that you'd like moved, well, you already know. You got to move it through Book Launch. And you can find out more information on them at booklaunchintl.com. And guys, listen, it is an absolute pleasure to have Debbie here on the line because her book we're going to be discussing. Keep in mind as you're listening to this interview and when you go to her Amazon page or her Barnes and Noble pages and you purchase the book, it's a memoir, right? So, of course, it's going to be taken from Debbie's personal experience in her life and utilizing examples from her experience. Now, really, what where I find this book has so much power and why it can connect to anybody that picks up the book. Guys, we know that once you get to a certain point in life and you get to a certain age, you come to the understanding that life is filled with obstacles. Life is filled with adversity. And the scale of the adversity in which you face will vary based upon the individual. But it's something that we all can relate to. And we all know that we've experienced, especially after this past year that we've all had. You know, with this pandemic, I mean, it's really kind of flipped a lot of things on its head. And a lot of us have experienced so many challenges. And I'm so glad that we have Debbie here on the line because, again, her book is a gripping and, and potent story about the power of prayer and how faith in God can improve your life. Now, I absolutely love that message, right? Because it's something that it gives a light at the end of the tunnel. It's something that is so hopeful that we can all strive to get to. And again, Debbie is the expert, okay? She's going to be talking from her experience. It's her book, right? So she's going to be able to articulate all the nuances in her book much better than I ever could. But this is going to be a fantastic education and a wonderful journey for everyone involved, myself included. So sit back, strap in, and let's get ready for an education. First and foremost, Debbie, Welcome to People of Distinction, and thank you so much for being a guest with us today. How are you? I'm doing wonderful. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, let me just say thank you before we get started. I'm so appreciative to be on the show. I know it's a privilege. You have so many people to choose from. And, of course, anytime I can honor God and what he's accomplished through his son, Jesus, it is very exciting and humbling. Absolutely. Listen, Debbie, the pleasure is all ours. I'm very much looking forward to this. It's an honor to have you on. And listen, guys, we're we're going to get taken to church today, okay? I can tell already this is going to be a great ride. We're we're going back to Sunday school, right? We're 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 hitting the masses right now. <laughs> I absolutely love it. Debbie, before we jump into the book because I know we have so much information to cover. Start Really? Let's go back a little bit. When did you first realize you wanted to be a writer? Well, honestly, um, I've had that desire to be a writer planted in my heart as long as I can remember. Mm -hmm. But I suppose I just needed the reason and the subject matter. And I believe God prepares us for his plan in our life before we're aware of what it entails. Absolutely. So I've had the desire. I just was later in life before I got started. There you go. So the desire was there. It was just sitting dormant for a little bit. And then the 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 opportunity came up. And this is why I think this book is so great, because they were talking about your story, but it's going to help so many people. Now, how long did it take you to write this book? 
Well, actually, the uh, book itself, probably about a month, but it was through a 14-month time period where I would, as I was going through all that I was experiencing, I would make notes and, you know, uh, uh, write notes as I went as far as what was happening and what I was going through and experiencing. And then at the end of that 14 months after the healing was manifested in my body, then I uh, was reading in Romans one day and the words, his glory is great later came up in my spirit and there was a stillness and a time of meditation and um, the understanding was that it was the title of a book and Mm -hmm. I was to make it an easy read so anybody who can read can read this book absolutely Now, I think we've already started to go into this next question. And if we did, totally fine. It's not a problem whatsoever. I'm curious, Debbie, talk to our listening audience. What inspired you to start writing? Well, like I said, this was actually an act of obedience. Um, I uh, had an auto accident. And the... uh, It didn't seem bad at first, you know. When I went to the trauma center, they didn't find anything uh, complicated or damaging in my body. And we were headed on vacation. (laughs) So uh, we just decided rest and uh, relaxation would be the best thing for it. So we continued on to vacation Mm -hmm. and had some muscle relaxers and... uh, just thought it would take a matter of days to get past the muscle spasms and and those things I was experiencing. And but what happened was the pain and uh, fatigue uh, grew worse, and um, so we called from our vacation spot to a uh, pain specialist, had an appointment in place when we got back. But before we went, when we got back, um, the morning of the day we got back, um, I was, I hadn't gotten up yet. And the Holy Spirit entered my room and uh, I just, I started Uh, thanking God for all that he had done. I was experiencing pain from the very center of my bones. You know, my mind was trying to tell me I had bone cancer or something. It was so bad. And so that just led me into talking to the Lord about it. And what I did was just started at the very foundation of my Christian life when I knew I had been born again. That was my foundation, and that was where I wasn't going to forget his benefits. And I started uh, reminding him and myself of all he had done for me over the years. My mother uh, was healed when I was in high school. The doctors had told her that she was not going to make it, told all of us that she would not make it because of bronchial pneumonia and dehydrating. And uh, we went to church that night, happened to be a Wednesday night, Mm -hmm. and the pastor had everybody come forward and pray. And so we did. And then the next day, the pastor went to visit her, and as he was reading... Uh, Psalm 23, when he said, And yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. She said she felt life come back into her. Wow. That, that's the way she put it. She felt life come back into her. 
So that that was a big one over the years. <laughs> Absolutely. And there there are many, you know, like that that I just rehearsed one after another, and they're all in the book. And so uh, I didn't put everything in the book, but there's enough there for people to understand uh, where I got the foundation. And then, and I say pillars built on a firm foundation is the way I put it. So all of these experiences of faith and healing and deliverances, um, I look at them as pillars on the firm foundation of Jesus after being healed, I mean, being saved. Mm -hmm. So that that was the structure of the book. And then at the end of that uh, particular time of prayer, and actually it was, you know, um, our weapons are... Um, are spiritual and so i was fighting this battle in the spirit and um, at the end of that i just my whole innermost being just said i will live there wasn't any i mean it just came up out of my spirit and i said i will live and i could see my spirit just leap off the bed and then my body just slowly inch by inch stood up and met it mm -hmm. and so I, uh, I you know I, I wasn't healed at that point as far as feeling it or as far as anybody else could tell but that was what I held on to for 14 months while I went through this battle because I knew I could always look back on that time and know that I was healed. Absolutely. So that, that, that's what gave me the strength to go for 14 months. And then, but midway through that battle of my personal healing, um, my husband of 28 years passed away. Oh, I'm so sorry. So that was uh, something I had to get past as well. Of and course. deal with that um, broken heartedness and all that goes with the loss of a loved one. And But God was faithful, and there was word for that too. And so I just kept going. And then um, that's just the way it was. One event after another, I could always look back on that time when I knew without a doubt I was healed. And I could call on that and take the next step. And then I, I just stepped every step until my healing. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, Debbie, listen, so many fantastic things in which you said and what I love so much about everything that you're discussing. And as I stated before, it's such relatable content from the standpoint of your just your your story and certain moments of your story, of course, are incredibly heartbreaking. But anybody again, that has gotten to a certain age in their lives, has experienced grief of their own, has experienced sorrow or hardships that they right. had to contend with. And I love the fact that you were brave enough to put this all into a book, to put it out for the public to partake in as well. And the title of the book is perfectly, perfectly applicable. I didn't know if I was clear in the story about my mother because she was in the hospital and the doctor had said she's not going to make it. Mm -hmm. And we, the family went to the church and the pastor had everybody come down and pray for her because we were expecting to lose our mother. Wow. So, 
No, that is, again, that is such a powerful, powerful story. I mean, guys, listen, there's so much more that we can discuss. There are so many other questions. because We've barely scratched the surface. And that's what I love so much about this is we've discussed so many things, but there are so much more left to be discovered. And that's why you have to go to Amazon. You have to go to Barnes & Noble. There's only one way to gather all of the information. And that's by going to her Amazon page and her Barnes & Noble page and picking up your copy of His Glory is Greater by Debbie Galbraith. You surely will not be disappointed. Now, Debbie, we have a few minutes left. And rather than going deeper into the narrative, I'm going to hold off. I want to switch gears slightly because, listen, being an artist myself, I love having this platform to be able to pay it forward to other artists out there listening in. Now, you are someone that has gone through the process of writing your own book, writing your own narrative, and you've gone through the gauntlet of getting it published because that anybody that's been through the process understands that is a feat in and of itself, getting the book out to the masses. Now, I'd love to pick your brain slightly in any advice that you would be able to offer a new writer, someone just starting out that is listening in. Well, I would say find what is in the heart or a subject where passion is found mm -hmm. and begin taking the steps. Just one bit of information at a time, write it down, and it will evolve. Absolutely. It doesn't matter what the passion is. God uses everybody for a, a person. A, you know, purpose and a passion, mm -hmm. and everybody knows what's in their heart and what it is. It doesn't have to be, a, you know, spiritual type thing. It can be anything, just whatever's in the heart, what interests them. Could be cars. <laughs> it doesn't Absolutely. matter. Just write down each little bit, a step at a time, and at the end of it, you will have your book. There you have it. Write what you're passionate about. Right. I mean, listen, there's no reason to confuse right. or muddle the water any more than that. Write what you're passionate about, because when you do it from when you speak from the heart, the words will just start to flow and they'll just come right on out. I love that. You know, listen, we know about your Amazon page. We know about your Barnes and Noble page. Talk to our listening audience. Are you on social media? How can our how can our re our readers and also listening audience members interact with you? Well, you know, I am working with a social media company to better serve the public. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a short video trailer soon for online distribution services, as well as a combination author book Facebook page and Instagram page. But in the meantime, I have pinned the link and press release of my um, book onto my Debbie Galbraith facebook page Fantastic. they will also see a platinum realty logo there to know that it's me <laughs> and if they click on my facebook page they can go in there click on the link and it will take them to amazon and barnes and noble and also itunes there you have it i mean as i stated we've barely scratched the surface I could sit here, I could talk to Debbie for hours. Unfortunately, we're out of time. So you know what you right. have to do. I'm going to say it again. Even though I know the majority of you are listening in and you've already gone to the Amazon page, you're checking into her Facebook page right now as we speak. For everybody else, first and foremost, I don't know what you're waiting for. And secondly, I'll re-impress it for you one last time. Here on the line with Debbie Galbraith. We just finished discussing her fantastic book, His Glory is Greater, available at Amazon and Barnes and & Noble. Guys, again, after the year that we all just had, or, but not even just this year, day-to-day -day life will present challenges that we all have to face. Utilizing this fantastic book, you'll start to pick up tips. You'll learn from wisdom that was acquired from Debbie that you can take and apply to your day-to-day -day lives. 
Let's grow. Let's develop. Let's educate ourselves. And it starts with this fantastic narrative. Debbie, this has been such a pleasure. Thank you once again for being a guest with us today on People of Distinction. Yes, thank you so much. I appreciate it, Benji.